And we're rolling episode number eight, episode number delapan of the Kaizai podcast. Om Swastiastu, Vlik Om Kwan, Swastiastu. TV, apa kabar, brother? Becik-becik, kan-kan kabar eh? Becik-becik, boss. <laughs> Semua sehat? Sehat selalu. <laughs> Mr. Gavin, a very, very, very good friend of mine, a brother of mine. Um, mm-hmm. I've known you for over 12, 15 years. More, bro, more yeah, even, yeah. I've been, I've, I knew you since you were like four, <laughs> five years old, you yeah. know, running around Ahmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but before we hop into the good stories and everything, yeah, 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 I got to yeah. do my, my podcast routine. Sorry for sure, for sure. There, but the, the desk slowly building out with more sponsorships here, you know, like we, we, we're working our way up towards Nike, but we'll Glad get to there. hear that. <laughs> Always represent. So, bro. you know, the classics, first of all, Kura Kura beer, the, one of the best beers in Bali. Shout out to them. Um, I'm going to actually crack one open right now for the podcast to get things easy, going. Easy, yeah. Boom. There you go. So cheers. Yeah, I like Mr. the Gavin. yellow one, bro. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> the island ale. Cheers. <laughs> we got Mason's chocolate, handcrafted in Bali, all vegan. It's delicious chocolate. I'm not the biggest fan of chocolate. I don't eat chocolate, but this chocolate is delicious. Like I must say, it's fully recommended. All the links will be in the description to go buy your chocolates. The beer link will be in the description. And we actually have a new sponsorship. We have uh, Babi Bagus, which is pork, a pork restaurant. Babi, the traditional uh, food of Bali, yes. uh, located in Umalas, in Bumbat. So if you want to go get some delicious Babi, go and check them out. All the links will be in the description again. And they've kindly actually given us a giveaway to run. Our first giveaway on the Kaizai podcast, really? which is helmets. So you can Stay get this, safe, nice, this nice black helmet from Babi Bagus. And they also have two other colors I'll be giving away. So we're going to have, look at this bad boy. A nice, nice hot pink helmet if you if if you want to ride and look Looks swaggy good. on the bike. Because remember, safety first. Always. Safety you want to look good guys. wearing your helmet. So they got a pink one to give away. We got a black one, and we also have a nice white looking one. So really, really nice helmets. Proper quality. Uh, just comfy, all around great helmets. So if you want to enter the giveaway, what you have to do is we're gonna do a post on Instagram. <laughs> When the episode is live, there'll be a post on Instagram with a picture of us in the helmets. And it's quite simple. All you have to do is just follow Kaizai on Instagram, follow Bobby Bagos on Instagram, comment when you did it, and the giveaway will be picked in a week or so once the post is active on Instagram. So shout out to Bobby Bagos. Shout out to all the sponsors. Thank you all for the support. And we also are wearing another sponsorship here, Kalapa Cartel. If you want really, really nice button-up shirts, they are so comfy, super <clears> smooth. <throat> Really, really nice shirts. Uh, this is a brand right here, Clapa Cartel. Fresh as a peppermint. So be sure to get your shirts at Clapa Cartel. All the links will be in the description. Thank you so much. Uh, we're on Spotify, TikTok, all that good stuff. So I'm rambling now with all this stuff. Let's let's go swiftly into the episode here. Looks Mr. like Gavin. you got it down, man. All the support coming. <laughs> yeah, right man. Left, it's it's, man. it's grateful. We're slowly getting That's there. Sick. We're working That's our sick. way up. We're working our way up. Proud so, Mr. Me, Gavin, we've known each other for, for over 10 to 15 years yeah, from being bro. born in Bali. Our parents are very good friends. Yeah. It all kind of started our relationship. I say at, at football at, at Changu Club when, yeah. when, when my dad was back coaching when we used to play football basically six six times a week you yeah. probably seven times a week five <laughs> times a day that was your dream yeah so, I mean at home as well man yeah, yeah so quick little introduction before we dive into how we know each other and we yeah. move on swiftly who, who you are and yeah. what you do for the, for the audience if they sure. don't already know so hi guys I'm Gavin Kwan player of Bali United and the Indonesian national team I've been playing football since I was like seven years old grew up in Bali born and raised in Bali I went to Skola Diamika and then went to Changu uh, Football Academy here, which changed names to Asian yeah. Soccer Academy. Like they change Multiple names every times. year, pretty much. <laughs> every know? year, all stars. Like, also with Kai, yeah, we were yeah. in Banteng. Yeah. So pretty much grew up playing in Bali and then moved to Jakarta. Like playing occasionally, I got called up to like some of the teams that play on the weekends. And then eventually made it to the national team. Yeah, but I just remember one thing before going into more any further detail. When we were younger, this man right here would 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 not go to anyone's birthday party. He would not he would not come <laughs> to any events. He would not be there at the beach. Anti social. He bro. would be he Anti-social. would be grinding and he would be putting the craft into becoming a fucking professional football player. So hats off to you, my brother. Like Thank well you, man. done, Thank man. You. you can see hard work pays off once you fucking put in your gratitude, you put in your effort, and you know what you want in life, and you just. Put in the effort and persistence, work. Persistence. Persistence. That's, that's the word, I'm that's the word for. for it. Persistence. You got to keep going for yeah. what you want. Know what you want. Go towards your goal. Exactly. And just trial and error, you know, like you Definitely. make mistakes and go again, go again. You know, it doesn't matter. Get, get back up. Yeah. So a uh, quick, quick, quick little, little thing. When you were, when you were, when you were younger, let's say when you first kicked the football about, let's say it was yeah. probably younger than seven years old, but your first love for football where you did training consistently yeah. and you knew what you wanted to be was a football player. Was that seven years old, you'd say? Yeah. I think like at seven years old, I already knew that I wanted to be a professional okay. football player. Cause so I was, you had always, it in your head. I had it in my you head. Know. I was always watching David Beckham. He was my idol. You know, nice. number seven, nice, Manchester nice, United. Nice. 
Don't say Manchester United. You can say England. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not no. Chelsea. Yeah, <laughs> I know Kai and uh, George. You know they're big on Chelsea, shout out, Mister Benson. <laughs> yeah, and I actually watched uh, your podcast with George as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate job, it, bro. Thank job. you. But yeah, at seven years old, I already knew that I want to be a professional football player. And like before that, I can't even remember when I got into football. Like, uh -huh. like it was just too it was just early. part of life. Like, it was just part of life. Yeah. You know, my dad was always playing takra, yeah. foot volley at the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was always there, and I guess that influenced me. But like, yeah, at seven years old, I just already you knew. had that vision. You Either that way, vision. like if if I don't become a professional football player, I want to do something with football. Mm. You know, whether I got a scholarship. A university in the states or something like that or even be a coach or maybe like organize a league something yeah. like that i always wanted to be involved nice with football so just towards that age i always like just playing at home you know i've i was fortunate enough to have a field in the back of my uh, house so every day after school i'd go there sometimes i'd take my neighbors we made our own like football academy <laughs> i was like the youngest one but i was coaching all the locals yes. you know the local Love boys it. in sanur uh, Panyaringan, shout nice. out to them. Um, so yeah, man, it was that's where it all started, and I guess then went to a proper football academy. Uh -huh. That's where I got my proper education and the fundamentals and what to work on. It's the first layer. Yeah, the, the first, first layer. layer. Yeah, yeah. First it was the passion, and it was just yeah. the fundamentals just, after that. You know. Well, yeah. fucking perfect, bro. Well done. Um, you you actually have your own academy now, no? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, I started that. It's in Buduk, which uh -huh. is like five minutes away from nice, here. Nice, bro. But. Right now, I'm putting on pause no, because course, it's still like I need permission from police Definitely. and I don't want any problems or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Also, with Bali United, I really want to put my full you focus put right now. 110% into the club yeah. and playing it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So, what I have is it's already an existing academy. They're just changing the name to my name. Yep. And then um, I'm over. selecting all the coaches to make sure that the standard of the coaching is Highly. good enough. Like, it yeah. has to be B license minimum. And like I have to watch over some things to make sure that's that it nice, all bro. goes well because quality is the most important. Yeah, you can't just definitely. have a coach no. and then I'm responsible for all yeah. these kids to make sure that they can become professional players later because not other than just education and football, yeah. I want to have a little channel for them because I have an agent that knows all the clubs in Indonesia. So at least there's you a pathway there nice. for all the kids that are going into my academy. Respect though, bro. You know, most people as football players, they do this and they set this up when they're retired. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're, yeah, you're going, you already got the academy I've set got up all, while you're still playing. Ideas, you know, he's, all he, ideas, he steps bro. ahead, he steps ahead, he steps <laughs> ahead. Good man, yeah, good man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I also remember the, the, the team, you actually signed up your academy for the Bali Cup. I, I ran the tournament. Yes, yes. Yeah. So they for the Bali Cup, well. they I'm just well. uh, putting a little team together. Nice. Yeah, And also last Bali Cup, I put the yeah, your academy first name. academy. Yeah. Yeah. They did on, well, bro. I they did also, okay. They yeah, yeah, well. yeah, they did okay. The, the level's pretty high. So yeah. the Bali Cup, if anyone's in Bali, it's coming again, uh, number two. So 8th and 9th of May. Yeah. Sign your teams up. The link's to the description of their Facebook and the Instagram. It's going to be Bali's prestige football tournament. Yeah, There's yeah. going to be Kura Kura beer. There's going to be lovely ladies. There's going to be high level football. <laughs> it's going to be good food. It's going to be an amazing two days of sports. Amazing, so, man. So amazing. get down there and support. And it's also all for charity. <clears throat> so it's going to be giving to the Soul Men Foundation, which is helping families wow. during unfortunate times of COVID. Yes. yes. As well as we're going to be raising some funds for Sungai Watch for, for Mr. Boss Gary. So yes, get, guys. Get, please get, get take part. Clean. Please take part. So, take care of the environment. Support your local community. 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 That's it, man. That's we're on, we're on a roll. It. Changing lives day by day with sport, man. That's the way to go. <laughs> so I have here, who is your favorite role model? So you've answered that, Mr. David Beckham, of course. Yes, and Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> and Cristiano so Ronaldo, David Beckham, Cristiano Ronaldo. And um, yeah. And Didier Drogba. <laughs> yeah, yeah, occasionally. <laughs> I'm only joking. We, we had we had Essien that came to person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he came to play in the Indonesian league. I actually uh, met him for a couple years. I have yeah, a yeah. funny story with Michael Essien, actually. Yeah? It's very weird. So maybe like three years ago, when three to four years ago, when I was traveling around Europe with my family, I was yeah. in Greece and I was at this quite, it was a, a decent restaurant, you know, because yeah. we played in Greece for a little while. Yeah. I was at dinner and the waiter saw me playing like a football game on my iPad, you know, and yeah. he's like, oh, do you like football? I was like, yeah, I love football. So like, what's your favorite club? I'm yeah. like, Chelsea. He's like, oh, really? You know, Michael Essien's actually just eating, eating dinner. Like right there, yeah, yeah. I was like, what? No way. <laughs> so like, I go, I go to him, I'm like, hey, like I'm a big fan. Can I have a picture with yeah, you? He's yeah. like, yeah, of course. So I get the picture with him, you know, yeah. I'm like so happy. I'm he's so, like, a, I'm he's like, a super nice dude, guy. Dude, super nice super guy. Super chill. And like, you know, he was eating his dinner. I didn't want to be disrespectful. Yeah, but, hey, bro, I'm a really big fan. I was young still, so, you know, 11, know. 12. Exactly. But, like, exactly. he's like, yeah, of course. He takes a picture. I upload the picture on Instagram. He likes it, comments. I'm like, oh, what a guy. And then like four years, five years later, he actually comes and plays in Indonesia. Yeah, exactly. I'm out at La Favela, you know, our home yeah. club. 
And I see him there again, and I'm partying with him there. I was like, bro, you know, I've met yeah, you before. Exactly, He's man. like, no way. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah, man. So shout out to Michael Essien. Yeah, that's that's shout out to Michael bro. Essien. So when <clears throat> do you have any? We're gonna we're gonna ask some questions during on, yeah. your, on your football career now a little bit. Um, do you have any uh, special routines or superstitions that that you believe in or do before 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 your games? So something weird that I do that doesn't actually like involve training or hard work yeah. is before the game I always put cold water on my hair okay. and also like. My body. my body just to keep it fresh, you know. Okay. For some reason, no, uh, I know you cold mean. water like it does it for me. It gets you, your, it yeah. gets you into the zone, you yeah. know. Like before the match, even going to the stadium, I asked the hotel concierge or the lobby, please send me a bucket of <laughs> ice, cold ice water, you know, just ice, and I dump water in it. Four or five hours later, I go have my shower, I dump the ice water. It just wakes me yeah. up. I know you it mean. It wakes me it gets up. Gets the blood circulating. Gets, yeah, yeah, you You're know. It gets you the blood circulating. Like some people say, like, oh, why you do it with ice water, man? It doesn't. It doesn't make you cold. Like yeah. then it's hard to warm up. It actually does the opposite effect. Like my body wants to warm up because of that. Yeah. You know, it gets you going. And um, yeah, like before the game, I occasionally just put cold water, keep you fresh, keep you focused. Nice. You know. I know Other, what you mean yeah. by that. Like when you wake up in the morning and you're tired, like you have a fucking cold shower. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? You don't have a hot. It shower. wakes you up. If you man. have a hot shower, isn't it making you more lethargic? Yeah, exactly. You want that cold shower to yeah, yeah get yeah, on your yeah. toes and get moving. Yeah. Before I thought it was the opposite, where I had a hot shower and it yeah. made me tired throughout yeah. the game. So now Definitely. I do. I do the complete opposite. Nice man. Yeah, yeah. So if anyone sees yeah. Gavin before a game, get <laughs> a bucket of ice. Yeah, and, and if you guys, you know, if you guys uh, are preparing for a match or something like that, or a podcast like this <laughs> have a cold shower and it'll do you good yeah that's one of the tricks next that's episode tricks. I'll, I'll do that ALS ice bucket yeah, challenge yeah, yeah. <laughs> but other than that man like I prepare myself uh, with injury prevention an hour before the training session starts um, like a lot of squats single leg squats rubber bands yep, those things are always good because you always need injury prevention uh huh because if you get injured, you're off you're two or three months. You know what I mean, done. and then you get left behind. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta keep your uh, injury prevention, have all that. That's number one. Yeah. Before the match, also I keep doing that as well, yeah. like one-legged squats and just mobility workout. Yeah. So then when you're on the field, you don't slow have but any, effective. Yeah, slow yeah. but effective. So yeah. before we're even on to the to the field to do our training with the team, everyone does their own. A routine nice. before that to make sure their muscles are ready this, this mobile routine you, you 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 figured it out yourself or you have you have special sports people part of the club that yeah so i just took you? it from my experiences okay. because i had multiple coaches right we yeah. had luis mila who came from spain who played for real madrid barcelona wow, nice. i had a brazilian um coach who is specializes in like physical uh preparation and all wow. that so all that throughout the years i took bit by bit what i found effective uh -huh. And what I liked, like my favorite parts of the training session or what I found that helped me a lot. And I just put them into one routine, nice. you know, Perfect. also like YouTube, YouTube that helps Man, me a YouTube lot. YouTube has you know? everything. Has, has everything, bro. Injury prevention. You on YouTube in like a week. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Like some things I don't find effective. Some things may make me sluggish uh -huh. inside the training or the game. So I cut that out. But a lot of them are like they, they make the fast twitch fibers yeah. also with the with um, uh, injury prevention. So okay. I put that into my routine. Perfect, yeah. perfect. So so um, right now you've, you give a, you're playing at Bali United, home yes. club, that must be amazing to do. But quickly, before we go into Bali United specifically, what different countries have you played in and what clubs have you played at so far in your career? I so throughout my junior career and my yeah. senior career, I've played in Italy, I nice. played in England, Preston North End, because nice. I, <laughs> I was trialing for Manchester United, but yeah. it turned out it was Preston North End who is the second tier. Okay. They work, they have a partnership have with a partnership, Manchester so United. It goes between them and then if you play yeah. enough, then they take you from there. Yeah, so we did a, there was a selection here in Bali, also in Changu Club, who yeah. had a scout that had an opportunity to go there. So I got best player two times in that tournament. Nice. And they said, okay, so the best players they go to Manchester United to do a trial. So I did play against the Manchester United under 18s with Preston North End, but it was only a month trial. Other than that, I did the AC Milan Junior Camp 2011. Nice. They did a selection over 10,000 kids yeah, I remember all that over Indonesia. In. Yeah. So I made the top 26. We played against the academy, won 3-2 as well, scored a goal there. Let's go. <laughs> uh, played in Romania, played for Cefere Cluj, the Champions League team. Uh, I was there for six months. I was expecting a contract because I was at 18 at the time. Yeah, you're expecting a contract. Yeah. Especially if you're abroad that in Romania, exactly. like six months already, you should, they should be giving you something. Yeah, and I had to pick between my national team and the club. 
Oh, yeah. So they made me choose, national. you know, like, oh, you come now to Romania. Uh, we Because that time I had a national team project yeah. that was two years training. Yeah, and usually countries don't do that with national teams. It's either two weeks or two months uh-huh. before the event. But Indonesia wanted to win this. Of course, so Indonesia two doing years, you know? with everything. <laughs> Something different, bro. Like, yeah, preparation <laughs> long. So I had to choose and I chose to go to Romania because like it's once in a lifetime opportunity. I got to take it. So I was there for six months. It didn't work out well. So I went to Germany, played second division under 19, Regionalliga. Uh-huh. Um, scored a few goals there. But again, it was just difficult to go up to the first team. Definitely, man. Definitely. And also like... Young ages as well, bro. Yeah. You're 18, 19, 20 max when yeah. you're at these foreign countries. You even had to move away from Bali, you know, as, a, as, as an individual. Yeah. Like, fulfill your career alone at that young age. It's not hard. Yeah. It's not, sorry, it's not easy. And I was expecting a lot, you know, because... Like here, I have the road to be professional. There, it's like still fifty oh, fifty and it's stuff a like completely that. Completely different drawing. Board yeah, and I was ex- I had a lot of expectation here because if I was gonna move to Romania or Germany, I'm not gonna stay there for two years yeah. like just waiting for a contract. No. no, if I don't get a contract in six months, I gotta move. Yeah, you know that's good though because a lot of people yeah. do that and they wait around their career. They wait around, fucked. yeah, because. Yeah. Because if you wait around too much, you expect so much of these agents. They they promise too much, and they, they also behind the back. They yeah, this, and they this, it's, they it's all business. Deals. It's all business. You gotta think of that, you know. So I was I had a trial with Hasfa, which is the Bundesliga team at the time. Now they're in uh, Bundesliga two, but um, I had two days with them, and then they promised me in April that I would have another trial. Um, so there was a lot of Korean players there, like you know Son, yeah, yeah, Son really? who came from Hasfa. He, oh, really? he he was, was there. I he was there that. like three years before me, so I was gonna try take that route as well. And wow, they had a nice. lot of Korean players, they had a lot of Asian players there at the time. So that's good. So I was going through that route, um, but then in the end, I went to the second division uh, Nindorfer TSV uh-huh. uh, team under 19. So I played there for half a season, nice. and then I, you know, I was a little bit frustrated. I wanted to be in Bundesliga. I wanted. To, I didn't want to be. Man, but yet again, you know, it takes time, division. my friend. You know, like, yeah. It's hard. It's maybe hard. maybe I should have been a little bit more patient. Yeah. Like I was already on second division in Germany, um, and the coaches that I were talking to there second who were division Germany's good, bro. Yeah, but under 19, yeah. so like it's course, supposedly yeah. my seniors okay. is fourth division. Yeah, you know, fourth division yeah. Germany. Uh, which is still semi bad, pro, man. you know. I didn't want to be that. It's not bad, but like that was the route to take. Yeah. But again, like I was just impatient. Yeah. So I should have been. Maybe I should have been more patient. I could have been Bundesliga three, Bundesliga two. But I think I made the right choice. Definitely. I came home to Indonesia. Yeah. Got a professional contract with uh, Mitra Kukar. That was my first uh, professional contract. Where at are they based? Eighteen in years old. They're in Kalimantan, Kalimantan. Timor. Okay. So for the for, for the first five years of my uh, career, I was always moving around Kalimantan teams. Yeah. Uh, they were more supportive. They had good financial um, yeah. support All that oil from money. from the oil money, from <laughs> palm oil. Yeah, oil stuff. unfortunately, palm oil. But uh, yeah, you know, like there's so much. Uh, the, so Borneo, the industry is yeah. so big, Borneo. Yeah. yeah, teams in Borneo specifically, they. They don't really make money from fans. They don't make money from yeah. sponsors. Corporations. They're all single yeah. support. Families like, or corporations. It's, it's just a hobby for yeah. them, man. They like it's, football. They like yeah. football. They just want to support. It's kind of like Europe, you know, like like uh, like, like all the like big clubs, like the like the Man City owners, those 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 Saudi. Yeah, guys. exactly. Like like, like yeah. Abramovich for Chelsea. They're, yeah, they're they're just rich people who enjoy and love football. Yeah, exactly. And they want to do everything professionally, yeah. and then they 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 make a football team, you know, just to show to their friends. And I almost or, feel like that's that's. A lot better than corporations owning owning clubs. Like yeah. you see, like Gaiaso, what's it? The, the Schalke sponsor, that big Russian gas, that gas company. Guy, Ga- I forgot the name of it. Uh, Gaspro. Gaspro. Yeah, Gaspro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're a huge corporation yeah. in football, and you just see them slowly taking over every club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just different to like individuals who love the game. Yeah, it's, owning a club. There's it's, there's pros and cons. Yeah, definitely, there's definitely, definitely pros and cons. Like, um, yeah, if it's individual, like they put really their heart into it. Yeah. When it's uh, corporations involved, of course, there's the business side of it, but which is fair too. Same you know? in business, man. With That's cor- the yeah. industry of the football industry. That's the sport industry. You you rely on sponsors. You rely on ticket sales. You rely on merchandise yeah. uh, sales, cafes. So the thing is about Bali United also is they're smart about these things you know they oh very smart Bali yeah, United, Bali United are, Cafe YouTube channel Instagram no. everything Bali United you I know? tell you now of course you know more than me yeah. part of it but from what I know like I have 
connects to the owners as well. I've yeah. played games with you. I see the club, like what they have set up for how, how yeah. young the club is and how yeah. new it is. It's only they five have, years. They man. have a very, very bright future. Very, very bright future. Like you see the roster of players they have already. They already have Brazilians in there. They have what else do they have? They have We have Africans, Dutch, a lot of Dutch, Dutch. players. Yeah. They have, we naturalized, like we've got a lot of naturalized players. So then they're in the category of local. So then you yeah. have more like um how do you say f international players international, in one team yeah. it's it's it's, yeah. it's 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 a bright future man for the yeah. club and i'm really excited Definitely. to like i went to that one game with 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 you and abe shout out to abe yeah, yeah. <laughs> we went and tommy as well shout out to you we went to watch a game actually gavin yeah, gave some tickets thank you a, for coming you won bro. like 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 four zero i think or something it was a good that result was like three yeah something like that something three like one, that it was yeah. and the fans were singing and chanting like it yeah. was a proper atmosphere you know like yeah. i've been to quite a lot of football games in my life and actually the atmosphere in bali united yeah. was high here yeah i actually really enjoyed it you know yeah the atmosphere everyone's the local singing, food you know, you know it's the it, whole game. it's a great vibe it's a i can't wait till 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 it's back on i'll yeah, be there definitely bro. man i'll definitely. be there every weekend bro trust <laughs> yeah, me yeah when me. things are open up, you know, right <laughs> now we're playing banging goals. Fans, but when we're when we do you know when when the supporters yeah. are allowed to come again definitely come by man bring all the boys definitely i think i actually yeah. spoke to george the other day we want to do a little like documentary type yeah. with his football channel yeah, so we're gonna course. do something cool with yeah, yours yeah. as well yeah. um, hopefully so, i can give you like exclusive access definitely to, bro we'll get something side sorted. of the pitch or something we'll get yeah. something sorted we'll get a nice easy, filming easy. crew we'll get a documentary yeah. filmed or something along those lines for That's sure dope, man. Yeah. so while you were moving around all those clubs you got yeah. fucking romania in your belt germany you germany, got so you're italy, fully equipped yeah. italy england were you always playing in that same in the same position or did no. it change throughout club to club? I, I changed throughout my years. Like I used to be, I started off as a winger, went to striker. I went to Italy uh, in Ovada, Milan for three months. I was a midfielder at the time. And then my professional career, I was winger again and now right back. Right back, So yeah. right full back, overlapping. Yeah, yeah. So Right wing back. Yeah, yeah, I guess in the league, I'm known as the versatile player that can move yeah. to different positions. Yeah. In my old club, sometimes in one game, I could be playing in four positions, like depending on what the last. coach needs. You know, like yeah. I start off at right back, and then after that, if things aren't going well, you gotta move up. He a puts bit. another, yeah. like say the winger's not doing well, he puts me up wing, yeah. puts another right That's back. Perfect though, bro. And then played like, striker, yeah. and then uh, yeah, man. But always on the right, that. right, right side, yeah. Yeah, always yeah. on the right side. Well, sometimes on the left. If if I play left wing, I can do that you as can well. Do it as well. I can yeah. do that as well. Uh, like I did a test with one Spanish coach because usually one player has a preference of right side of or course. left side. It all depends on your foot as well. Yeah, and this coach couldn't figure me out. He was just <laughs> like, you know what? Uh, I don't even know if you if you prefer the right side or <laughs> the left that. side. Are you one of the players? You're like Tersaraja. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like it has pros and cons because like you don't specialize on that one uh, position all the time. You know, like most players, they put so yeah. much time on that. For me, I have to adapt really every quickly. time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And sometimes it's gotta you gotta do it quick, man. Because if like for mean. five minutes you you're adjusting, it's you it's, forget you forget, and yeah. it's it's and you're you don't, marking you new players all the time. Because yeah. when you're on the rights all the time, you yeah. get familiar. You do your research behind yeah. the scenes. Where okay, exactly. I'm playing against this club. This is their best player exactly. on this side. So if you're moving around all the time, you yeah. gotta adapt. Okay, what's yeah. this player like? Yeah, before the game, you have to watch your opponent. Yeah, and like watch videos watch games Definitely. what they played what nice. feet well done, you know yeah. if they did they go inside do they go outside yeah. how do they control the ball what are they, do they, they have they a good use? touch yeah. you know some things like that you are have they to go really... sitting all the time this it's endless possibilities yeah. what they yeah, do yeah, so yeah. The research like is that, important how, how, how many hours do you say you do that before a game That's before the game usually one day before the match i'd watch one game on the match day i'd probably watch either two games sometimes i fast forward to like if there's stoppage time yeah. i miss i skip yeah, all that but yeah like throughout the week maybe two or three times nice yeah it's but usually important. it's it's depending on the game you know it's so crucial. i watch only for the games uh, that are coming up nice yeah so um moving on to mental mental side of things yeah how how challenging was it as at a young age because you said you moved yes. to 18 to to actually go and and put yourself in these scenarios with with new people yeah in a foreign country all alone like how mentally challenging was this for you or was it actually not mentally challenging yeah. for you well i guess moving away wasn't really the hard part okay um i moved away like since i was 12 years old i think that was one of the biggest ones like 12 years old i was already moving to Jakarta to, to play in the oh, under yeah. 13 national team. Okay. So it was really difficult. It was the first time I ever moved man, away from my family. 12 years you know? old, like, come on, man. Yeah, so, 
And you know, I was the only white boy, so it was a little bit. I had to I know you know, you mean, man. differentiate a little bit, you know. Doing doing sports here in Indonesia yeah. as a white person is definitely yeah, tough, yeah. man. Like like I'm not as white as you, but like even me, like I feel yeah. like when I used to go play tennis tournaments around Indonesia, like the amount of hate and shit. Yeah, yeah, you know. Just people like banging yeah. bottles while you're serving, yeah. throwing bottles at you, like. And I can speak fluent Indonesian, and you hear the shit they're saying. Yeah, it's all part of the game, you know. Yeah, like that's yeah. what builds it's, you to who you are. At a young today. age, you know, the kids. You yeah, know, of course, it's like oh, white boy, whatever. But you don't know, but like. Yeah, you know, I guess when you go older, they accept you more, and then you course, earn definitely. you earn respect yeah. and all that. And it's if all you part can of mental, play the man. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It builds you. And of course, you have like close friends and all that. You know, there's there's definitely different kinds of people. You know, but. Um, yeah, man. Mentally, it was okay. What's what's really hard is trying to keep up the performance. Sometimes yeah. you have a bad game. Yeah, you're really you're frustrated. Right. You've disappointed everyone. You've disappointed. You don't know where you're going. A scout was watching. You wanted to have, you know, a good performance and you didn't deliver. You missed that opportunity. Yeah. That was the hard part, you know, like 100%. always, always um, keeping up with the standard. Yeah. That was always the hard part. Yeah. Like if you have a bad game or stuff like that. Before the match, I used to get very... Um, nervous you know I have to perform and all this so yeah actually like um, mental is a very big part of the game oh, 100% you know? it's very big what what, what percentage ratio would you say you'd split it mentally and physically would you say 60 40 would you say I would 40, say 40, 50 50 70 30 what would you say I would put it as in if if you have the physical abilities yeah. but if you don't have the mental abilities you're going nowhere. this wouldn't work yeah but if you don't have the physical abilities, I agree with you but you have the mental abilities you can still this work. Still, you, you can, can still, still work progress on that. Work hard, hundred percent. And it that's depends on how sports. you use it. Yeah, you know, it's also some business. Yeah, man. some people don't have the physical yeah. abilities, but they perform so and well. They work day in and out. And you like, know, they yeah. they just perform Definitely. so well. Like naturally, they're able to write, they make the decisions, they make the right touches. Yeah, it's just some things can't be explained. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just the way you are. And yeah, and um, yeah, man. That's throughout my years, I see so many players who the different kinds, and you just have to find the right balance. You and you can learn a them, lot man. from yeah. these from these players who have the natural ability. Who, who have that? You, you know? can't you can't really work on mental, bro. You can always work on your physical. Yeah, always. Yeah. You can at the end of the day, if you have the best shot in the world, but you fucking don't have the me mental side of it. Yeah, you're not gonna go anywhere. Yeah, but you can always go in the gym and you can always do drills. Yeah, I say okay. There's maybe some mental drills, meditation. Yeah, stuff meditation like that, you know, stuff like that. You can work on. Experience 100%. is number one. Yeah, experience yeah. is number experience one. is number one. You like you see your senior players how they do yeah. before the game. Sometimes they don't care. You know, sometimes no. they're they don't want to give you they, anything. You, you play music in yeah. the in the changing room. You know, and and that's contagious. Yeah, like you 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 hang out with all these players and you slowly become like okay. It's just a game, man. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you're a professional football player. It's not like other sports where, like F1. Yeah. You yeah. know, you, I don't know if you watch F1, <laughs> bro. You mess up a little bit, yeah, you're, you're out. Yeah. You know, your career's the done. Sponsors are over. You know? The cars fuck. Yeah. You nearly die. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's like a lot more pressure on that. I think. Definitely. At the you end know, of the day, football, it's just football, football, man. it's a yeah. social sport. You know, you do have to perform. You do have to like show your best. Yeah. But. At the end of the day, it's a social sport. 100%. Like, you depend on your teammates. So you got to be like good friends with Football's your teammates. Football's a religion, man. Because if, if you want to be the guy that's like, you know, the yeah. outcast or like, ah, I don't need this team. You know, I could be outside. I could just perform myself. Yeah. Where are you gonna get the right passes? Where are you gonna get the right crosses? People aren't gonna you know? give you shit. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you need you need to work together. You need yeah. it's a it's a team sport. It's a team sport. sport, man. It's a team sport. It's a team sport, yeah. definitely. And football is is more than just a sport, man. Football is a religion. Yeah, it's it's a religion. It's a religion, me, and, and it's not soccer. It's football. Hey, okay? football guides, football. Soccer. All George you Americans, Benson can tell you that. <laughs> you have the audacity to call American football football when you fucking play with your hands and the name foot is in it. Yeah, yeah. It's football. But yeah, definitely, man. Football has a capability of 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 stopping wars, you know? Like in mm. World War II, like on Christmas Day, Germans and English stopped fighting yeah. and played a game of football. Exactly, you know? man. No other sport can do that, bro. They're not going to stop the play game of yeah, dance exactly. or, or, or basketball. I'm sorry. It's yeah, football not brings happen. people together. <laughs> Definitely, you know? man. It is. It you is connect. Really Even you don't speak the same language. Man, I, like just you, you understand yeah. each other. Yeah, and just, just, yeah. just the, 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 the feeling you get when there's like the Euros on the World Cup, yeah. the Champions League. You know, like waking up at like here in, in Bali, exactly. like it's always on at like three, four a.m. So waking up, you know, and going to watch a game. Yeah. Like, everyone's up, man. Everyone's I was up in the, the other night watching Chelsea Porto. We're yeah. into the semifinals, baby. Chelsea's winning the Champions League. That's all I'm saying. Trust me. It's coming home. Stamford Bridge. Let's go. <laughs> so back on track. Um, yeah. 
What would you say is one of the toughest times out of your your football career so far? The toughest moment is it one moment that yeah. is it is it the like you said the build up of just having that pressure on you yeah. from specific scouts watching you or is there one moment you remember like fuck like this was the hardest moment yeah. so far in my career? I think the toughest moment was making the decision between my national team okay. and the Romanian club Chipre okay, yeah. Cluj. Okay, right because I had like five days That's to your decide. That's path right there. Yeah, you know like. Yeah. Because the thing is, the national team, it was a big tournament, AFC Cup, AFF. Uh And like I was talking to all my coaches, talking to all my mentors, talking to my agents. What's the right decision? And yeah, of course, most people say like, yeah, you got to go abroad. You know, that's that's the right way to took to take. And I was glad I took that. Route. Well, definitely because I that, wouldn't be yeah. where I am today if I didn't 100%. take all these and people look routes, at that in you know? consideration like where yeah. you are now like oh what do you what, what do you have on your CV like a CV kind of you be like yeah. oh I played here I played here I played here I played yeah here. exactly and people love that like especially yeah. in the industry it's going to give you that advantage yeah, and the thing and the things I've learned from playing abroad oh, yeah, and endless. bring it back here and it's like it's traveling definitely, man. It's definitely like made traveling. me a more mature player and but the thing is when I was in Romania I was having a hard time because uh, we were promised a contract, didn't happen. Well, Romania um, as a country is yeah. Right? It was it was I had to deal with I'm mafia. Not you know? yeah. I lived in Romania yeah. illegally for time. three months yeah. because the club promised that they'd take care of the visa, and they didn't. And we did this as a group. Like yeah. the whole group was like, okay, when's the visa gonna finish? When's the visa gonna finish? We always ask the the club. Right, and the club's always like, "Oh, don't worry about it. We gotta take care and care of. You know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be done. Fucking it's gonna be Romanians. done." <laughs> so, like, they always, you know, they promised so many yeah. things but didn't deliver. You know, and so I was really frustrated with that. Definitely. No contract. Um, you know, we were, I was, we were still training, still doing games pretty well. Like we were playing, uh, uh, like second division or third division in Romania, um, which was okay, but. In Indonesia, the yeah. national team, under 19s, they won AFC Cup, yeah. first place. That's, they won AFF, yeah. Fuck. first place. The whole country it's is watching them. behind you, man. The whole country knows. Yeah, I was watching them. Evan Dimas <laughs> like, is, you yeah. know? Every, yeah. every person knew who my teammates were in the national definitely, team, definitely. in the under 19 and national team. And it's for your country, man, at the yeah. end of the day, you know? Like, fuck. And I was, I was re- like, deep inside, I'm happy like yeah that these guys they're they're winning i was in this team but i'm also like super oh, frustrated like this could have been i was in this team i was in the top 11 i was already You're my name is on this yeah. list yeah. for this squad that won aff or won afc that beat korea yeah south korea yeah. three zero you know like it was like making for history sure, it was making history moment, in okay. indonesia yeah, you know definitely. you so, can't think of it like that bro you yeah know what I so mean? Like, at the time i had that yeah. mentality it was like oh man i'm now missing you out you know do it with the actual indonesian national yeah team. and then trust me like trust me it's fortunately fine. it all went well like all my all my teammates that were with me in romania all the australians the yeah. canadians romanians because we had like a big squad that came from all around the world and I was telling them, like, look, this was my route, you know, yeah. like, why am I here? You know, why yeah. am I in Romania? Like, they helped you playing, you know, like, you know? So, yeah. so, yeah, that was like the most frustrating time. Okay, definitely. Like making a decision and knowing that that could have happening on the other that side. happened on the other yeah. side of the world. And I was there, you know, I was already in that route 100%. and I took the wrong one. So, like, that was that was such a big, like, mental thing for me. Like, oh, I was so frustrated. Yeah. And then I decided to go to Germany um you know instead of ro- continuing my way in romania you know fighting with agents fighting with uh, yeah. the club to give me a uh, contract or even like to take care of my visa so i didn't want to deal with that i just wanted to play football yeah. you know and of like course, play man. professionally at the end of the day that's what but you want to yeah do. and the, now now i get to realize like okay it all happened for a reason uh, yeah it all happened for a reason happened. i wouldn't be where i am today if i didn't take those um Definitely. that route you know like i would i learned all these things yeah and Fortunately, I made it to the under-23 national team when Luis Mila came yep. uh, to Indonesia, coached the national team. Um, and I made it to the seniors as well with Simon McMenemy, a coach from nice. you know, uh, from England. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, man, it, that's, that's the thing. You, you just you just don't know, you know. You Sometimes know. you make decisions. That's life though, man. <laughs> and then at the end, it's all going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> well said. So on the other side of that, what was yeah. the best moment so far in your career? The best moments... Not the I, best moments. The best moment. The best one moment that comes to head. The best one. moment. There's one moment that would always stick in my head. There's and it says a lot what your mind can really do. Okay. Because there I was like this it. time where <laughs> where I had to. We were losing two one. I was with my old club Barito Putra, uh-huh. and I was on the bench, right? And um, yeah, 
we were losing 2-1 and I just had to make a difference, right? But I came on the last minute, literally like on super minute. Super sub. Yeah, Chicharito super sub. Chicharito like, only, style. Only like two minutes left. Chicharito right? style. <laughs> I didn't even have a single touch of the ball. Just came on uh, the first, you know, 30 seconds. I was just feeling the game. But then the ball came me. I was playing left wing at the time. Ball came to me. I just decided to dribble past the, the right back, yeah. past him, dribble to the middle. And just take a shot. Yeah. Went through the defender's legs into cool. to the to the bottom left. Let's go. You know, so like that was one of the that biggest the moments, moment. man. Because before the game, I already knew, like, okay, I have to score because I already made you I already made a bet. Head. You knew. You told yourself. Yeah, you I, made, I made a bet with my friends. Yeah, you know, you like, okay, if it. if I score, you're coming to visit me. Yeah, you know, so <laughs> so that was already in my head. And like, oh, and I was on I the bench. I want to see my friends. <laughs> you know? I was on the bench. Like, how am I gonna score a goal? I'm on the bench. You know, but last minute, not even, you know, uh, you you not even the whole do, game. Man. I just take a touch, shot, scored, you know, wow. like, so that really like told me like, man, Anything's your, possible. your brain, like, bro, you, if you can here, access man. this, yeah. I know what you mean. The higher crazy, level of bro. thinking, bro, of you telling yourself, access this, it's crazy. It's manifestation. Yeah, yeah. Like if you 110% believe you're going to yeah. do something, you have to fully believe it within yourself. Yeah. Bro. You're Definitely. gonna fucking do it, bro. Yeah, We've and the thing is, on unleashing that, like, times. like, I don't know, man. I still haven't figured out. Like, I can't unleash it all the time. You yeah. know, it comes once in a while. You know, but no, like, of course, I gotta find a way where it's like yeah. it's consistently there. You gotta train you know? your brain to do that with smaller yeah. activities off the pitch. Bro. Yeah, like like reading specific books, doing certain meditations, yeah, doing certain goal setting, which is not so big, but you complete yeah. things. That all trains it, and then you move that and shift it into the game. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah, definitely, that. definitely. Would you would you consider moving and playing abroad again, or for now you're happy with Bali United? Let's say tomorrow, or yeah. in a, well, obviously you're tied up in a contract, but say yeah. you're offer to play, I don't know, in like Thailand Spain, or Malaysia, Thailand, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. just another country. Would yeah, you take for it? sure, would of you course, take it of course. Yeah. yeah, I'm always pushing my agent to always look for opportunities abroad because nice. that's always the goal for Indonesians, right? Yeah, like it's not just for yourself, but opening windows, opening um, you know doors for yeah. Indonesian football players. For the next generation you know what i mean so if you've played if you've played abroad you're looking you're you're representing indonesia in that country wow. and hopefully more clubs more coaches would look for more indonesians in the long run you know so i'm of always course. i'm always pushing my agent like uh my agent muli munia i've been working for, with him for like almost 10 years now. he has lots of connections yeah, no? lots yeah, of connections lot of connection. he knows cristiano ronaldo's agent yeah. personally he knows so cristiano like ronaldo no, personally you know like yeah. uh, rio ferdinand yeah. uh, he goes to portugal cristiano ronaldo picks him up at the airport really? with his porsche <laughs> yeah, like why is that though? why is that it's just the guy is just so he's just, he's just he so charismatic football, yeah. he's very like He's just very important to, to these people. I don't know how he does. He's, socially, he just yeah. he just clicks, you know. Like he, he provides value to all these nice. people, and then when it comes to Indonesia, he hooks them up, you know. Like he oh, brought he brought definitely. Cristiano Ronaldo with extra jaws uh, to do nice. all these commercials here. The mangrove That's project. That's what he was in the mangroves, yeah. Bali. He went to Aceh, adopted a kid in Aceh, right? Um, Marinus, I think it was his name. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, that must be crazy. Yeah. So like, <laughs> my agent, my agent has a lot of contacts. But yeah, definitely, he's he's put some players abroad. So like, I'm definitely pushing keep that. Keep working hard, brother. Yeah, yeah. Is I'm at that age where it's like, okay, I gotta I gotta start, you know, looking for uh, opportunities abroad. Yeah. And you know, consistency. But, yeah, consistency. Yeah, and definitely. It'll come your way. Definitely. Believe me. Believe me. Um, so, are you against or for the VAR? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a very good question. That's a very good question. If you question. don't know what VAR is, I'm not watching VAR. Yeah. Uh, it's it's virtual, assistant virtual assistant referee. referee so yeah. it's a technology camera. But yeah, man. I mean, in Indonesia, we definitely need that. You think so? We definitely need that because it's there's so much. I know it's how happened too many times. Referees are. And yeah. even the last game, even the last game where we it was in the corner finals. Um, like we played against Pesa Sleman yeah. and. It's very hard to tell if the ball went past the line or not. You know, goal line technology. Well, there's not even goal line technology. No, yet. We, ah, like, we we okay. have to watch the from See, the but, from the TV, right? Yeah, but Gavin, goal line technology and VAR is two completely. Yeah, I know. Different but things. like, like goal line technology yeah. is 150 percent 
fair. And yeah, yeah, I know. My point of view with the VAR is yes. momentum in football yes, yes, gets yes. shifted, bro, and it gets stopped. Yes. It gets, yes, you know, yes, yes. I, am, I, I don't know. For me, football is all about building momentum. You're attacking your defender. Yeah. And when you do the VAR, you stop every fucking five minutes. Yeah. Go to the thing. Okay, no yeah. goal. Goal. Like, it's, it's, it's a debatable yeah. subject. So Yeah, because, like, as referees, it's very hard to see the split second of what really happened. Of course. It's, it's and making a decision yeah. after that. You know what I mean? It does take away the emotional side of it. Like, it's a goal. Oh, everyone's celebrating. Yeah, oh, wait, check, yeah. check that the fucks VAR. With you you, know, as a you know, check the VAR. So emotionally, that's like, it does, you know, um, it, it stops the, it, like the, the culture, it gets ruined a little yeah. bit. But again, it's to keep things fair, fair. you know, to keep things I really guess. fair and to have all the debates after the game shut up, you know, like, oh, we should have won, we should have this, like, oh, that was a goal, that was not a goal, that was offside, you know? Yeah. So you always have those people, like, discussing that, right? And I guess with VAR, it does eliminate and it keeps everything fair. pretty fair. Yeah. But again, man, I really don't have a side, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, I miss, hard, yeah. I miss the days where I'm watching, you know, like, the the drama the controversy that's what and all i mean that. like i i i yeah. honestly have to say i don't have a i don't have a problem with it i get it's 100 percent fair but I'm, yeah. I'm slightly leaning towards the side of no va yeah because that's just a football i grew up watching yeah you know, that like you say controversy emotion yeah you know and like the the shit that comes with football after the games when, oh you know i just that's football it's a part of football for me yeah so i'm on the i'm on the no side of VAR. goal line technology yes, i think 100%. i think i agree with goal line technology goal line at technology, least yes. at least have goal line technology yeah, because that shows if the ball went in or yeah. not like that that should be and that's every football that's game. the biggest like differentiation of whether yeah, like you know Lampard the team should have won or not like you know part in the world cup yeah. against germany you know like if they had goal line technology there in, in south exactly africa. Was south africa yeah it was south africa uh, right? i think so yes, yes yes when when lampard shot and it went clearly over the line and yeah he scored two goals directly after yeah. you know like that that just shows how the outcome of games can be changed yeah exactly technology. and if you score with like the first 10 minutes it wasn't a goal like it would have been it's Completely a totally different game. Different game. Yeah. If you concede one, you, you play a totally different game. Exactly. If you score one, you're more conservative. Yeah. You sit back, three points, you know? Yeah. Like, the, the ultimate thing is to win, yeah. you know what I mean? So, the tactics are, are all based on that. Definitely. You know? And the VAR so shifts If, if it, a goal right? happens in the first five minutes and they, they call it off, it's yeah. going to be a completely totally different, different game. game. Yeah. You know? So, I definitely believe, I definitely agree yeah. with goal, uh, goal line technology. VIR... Maybe I'd say like 50, I eighty percent I 80% believe in it, but there's that twenty percent. But there's that twenty percent. It's like okay, look, I'm like sixty. If you can do it faster, you know. If you could yeah. just do it faster, yeah. like you tell the referees faster, right like okay. The thing, okay, this yeah. is my problem with it. Okay, this yeah. is the only problem I have with it that's pulling me back with VR is they use it for certain circumstances, but then they won't use it for one circumstance. Yeah. If you have VAR, use it for you everything. Be consistent. Yeah, you gotta use be, it for everything. You, you gotta be consistent. Don't just use it for like okay. One one thing, the goal doesn't go in. Okay, no goal. But then someone will fucking get two footed tackled in the yeah. back, and they're not gonna VAR that. If you have VAR, use it for everything. So yeah, it's fair. Yeah, but, and again, like all referees are different, right? Yeah. But you got to be consistent as a referee. That referee because is like a hard job. Say though. in the five minutes, uh, like supposedly a potential penalty should yeah. have happened, and okay, and you gave it, and another thing happened on the other side for the other team you have to give that you yeah. have to be consistent if it's be. a foul yeah. like say if a touch is enough to make it a foul yeah. to, to give a foul you got to be consistent throughout the game you That's can't I mean. change you can't your mind one time you can't change your mind five minutes later oh a tackle happened yeah. and uh, yeah oh it That's wasn't hard I mean. enough you got to be consistent throughout like the game United versus Spurs the other day yeah. with son you know how we got hit in the eye and yeah it, and then man you scored from that goal yeah, yeah. and then five minutes later because the VAR stopped it Hyung Min Son just scored directly yeah. after, you know? Like, yeah, it, yeah, it, things like that. It flips a game, bro. Yeah, That's man. why it's like, ah, I don't but, know. Yeah, but some referees, their tolerance of like, okay, maybe even a hit is yeah. not even a foul. Yeah. Yeah, so it's got to be like that throughout the game. Yeah. And it's fair. So it becomes fair for both teams. You don't favor Violent one team. You don't, yeah. you, you, you can't like change your mind. Oh, now it's, uh, okay. now I feel like making a, a foul. Oh, you know, that looks gnarly. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to make a foul. If it's, if it's like, uh, if the hard if if the if the hit is hard yeah. and you don't give a foul, the next one, if the hit is hard, no you also right. don't give a foul. Consistency. You know what I mean? Yeah, Consistency definitely. as a referee is is yeah. important. hundred percent. If yeah. you could change one thing about the Indonesian league right now, what would it be? Um <laughs> like, I think get goal line technology. Yeah, goal line technology. Number one, yeah. like especially after the last game, like I said, right? Yeah. There's so many occasions where the ball passes the line and yeah. 
It's no you know, problem. and the yeah. thing is, everyone on TV sees it, yeah. right? Everyone on TV sees it. Everyone's like on their Instagram, on yeah. Pangamat Spak Bola, yeah. on Garuda Revolution yeah. Instagram, and yeah. everyone's on the comments. Oh, it's no, a goal. No, it's no, a clearly no, goal. goal. It's a clear yeah. goal. The referee is an idiot. Yeah. The thing is, the referee didn't really do anything really wrong. See, yeah. He he just couldn't see, man. His it's the angle, you know. Even sometimes <clears throat> the the linesman. They probably they can't see because there's someone in the way. And it's not hard for fucking Indonesian. Yeah. Like goal, line, goal line technology is different than yeah. VAR. Like goal yeah. line technology is simple. That's been around for like three years already now, yeah. four years. So they should definitely get that in. Number one is goal line technology. Yeah. And the second, I hope supporters can really be more civil with each other because nice. we still have occasions where a lot of rivalry a lot of rivalry fans get hurt. Yeah. You know, especially like when the rival fans uh, play an away game and the supporters come away. They do an away trip to watch the game. They fuck shit up. And even though you're not wearing the colors, yeah, they know. They know. They find out. Bodies. They you're find out. Bodies. Oh, you're a member. You're yeah. a member of the other team. Yeah. And and sometimes you can't really control a, oh, a crowd, you know. Like, so please, like, just try to be more if civil. You look at it in Eastern Europe. It's bad, you know, with like yeah. all the like you know ultras and all this and that. Like, yeah. How they how they fight, how they break shit, how they yeah. fucking throw flares. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. They need to be more civil, but I also like that in football. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's it's that. always great to have, you yeah, know, be when, rowdy when violence, and everything. When violence but, comes into play, yeah. then obviously no. Yeah. Like, control yourself. Don't hurt other people. Yeah, and it's not it's not worth to take someone else's uh, a life, life, you know? 100%. Because no, we definitely. still, we had, uh, we had the, throughout history, Persib yeah. and Persija, they, yeah. they take turns to kill taking, other, yeah. taking lives yeah. because they, it's like a rivalry you for them. My, the one you took mine. Oh, we're gonna take fan. one of yours, and then now, then it it doesn't so it doesn't stop. Behavior, like, it doesn't you take stop. My, my chocolate. I'm taking your chocolate. You <clears> from know, before we were like, even born, man. Yeah. It's it's this war has already started. Yeah. You know, from before we were even alive. It was it's been it's been going on for 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 uh, over a decade, like over two decades. Yeah. You know, it's it's crazy. Sante is someone. Yeah, yeah Sante. <laughs> we're you all could, You could be you could be um you know crazy, but. Just, limit. just know when to protect yeah. others, okay. you know? Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. um, Definitely. Current thought on the fucking no fans now in football. Yeah. Like, it's it's different, man. It's it's awkward. Like For me, it's the worst thing that could, uh, you could possibly do the sport of football. Yeah. Just having no fans. You know, like I like I said earlier, like you don't have to speak the same language, but you understand each other on yeah. the field. And the thing is with the supporters, you can't really hear anything anyway. Yeah. So it's all like body language. It's you. We could be this distant, but if it's a full stadium, we, would be, we wouldn't yeah. be here able to hear each other. Yeah. It has to be just like yeah. body language or just reading uh, if they're about to kick the ball or something like that. But now, now, you, can now you can literally hear everything. Yeah. So everything is verbal. You know, yeah. everything is just like, oh, I do this or that. And yeah. sometimes it's confusing. You know, sometimes it's, you could hear literally everything and sometimes you have the pressure from the whole team. Yeah. You know, when you have pressure from the fans, sometimes you don't think about it. But when you pre have pressure from the team, you feel that you more. You hear it way you feel, more. Yeah, you yeah. feel that way more so than that's a player's if you have pressure from yeah. the fans. Okay. You know? As a fan's perspective, it's the worst thing that could possibly do. Yeah, football, exactly. Like, and the thing that pisses me off the most is like, they're running the Champions League. They're running these league games. And yeah. there's all the teams there. There's all the... There's some fans there. There's yeah. the people who work there. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's people who are wearing their masks and then there's two me two meters down the side, there's someone warming up with no mask. Yeah. So you know what I mean? And at the end yeah. of the day, all of those people are going to be coming in and going out of the same exit. Yeah. You know what I mean? True, true. But the thing is like, I know it's necessary. I mean, it's, it's necessary to have no fans at the moment. Is it though? Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I think I mean, we've come past the stage now with this whole yeah. thing where, where just just open the fucking floodgates, get the fans. Yeah, uh, I know, I know. They're already, I'm just trying they're to already, Fans just, are already yeah. depressed enough not having business, not being able yeah. to go out. We're all, you know, football in England, bro, in some country, in some, in some, sorry, not countries, in some clubs, bro, like, yeah. that's all they have, bro. A working yeah. class person, like, give exactly. Sunderland, for example, or any yeah. club, like, bro, for them to watch their match yeah. on a Saturday with their kid or with yeah. their best friend. Is 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 what they look up to their whole their whole week. That's their life. Man. Yeah, they give everything to that, and just not some fans not being able to do that. Like it gives a mental toll on them. Yeah, you know? like it it, it's, in, it it needs to be sorted. Even out. in some countries in Europe, they go they go out of work. I mean, what I mean is like, you know, you come home at five. Usually, it depends on the the game the the time of the game. Yeah. Some companies they say, okay, you can you can go home to watch your favorite team play. You know, yeah. they they give that. 
they give that uh, benefit yeah. to their employees. Classic. Like, okay, what what team you're you're yeah. in? Uh, you're a Real Madrid fan. Okay, Real Madrid's playing nice. this afternoon at five. Okay, you can come home early. Yes. So, you know some some they need that, some, bro. some like companies I said, do that. Is fucking, it's more yeah, than yeah, just yeah. Sports, <laughs> some people. It's their but life, man. Again, it's it's uh, it's tough it's it's decision. Yeah. yeah, the players do swab tests every week. You know, and consistently before the game. Even us, yeah. bef- like three hours before the game. Or a few hours before the game, we take a swab test yeah. and make sure everyone is negative before before you even get onto the bus. Yeah. Before you even make the the first eleven, the the lineup, you have to make a the swab test. You get re- your results. Yep. Then, then the, you go. the team can register you okay. for 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 the stadium. So moving on to 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 you playing for Indonesia, bro. Yeah. The the, the full on top tier national team i just want to say that's fucking amazing bro Great thank you bro because like, playing you, bro. for your country bro like you can play for your club you know what i mean yeah that's something it's 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 definitely but a different when you feeling. play for your country your <clears throat> national team bro yeah that is you've made it you know what i mean so so do you remember the first time you got called up and also the first time you sang that national anthem yes how i crazy, remember that how crazy, i remember that how crazy was that feeling that's what crazy bro head, it's you, you just get goosebumps yeah. all over your body you know like i was 15 at the time playing for the under 16 national team I was fortunate enough because my path was, I went through AC Milan junior camp. That's where I got exposure with PSSI uh-huh. uh, to know me as a player. Before I was an under 13 national team, but it wasn't the, um, how do you say? It was sponsored by Yamaha. So it wasn't the PSSE national team, right? So then the first time I was in the proper national team was 15 years old. So yeah, you just have to get exposure with to the federation and, and from there, made it there, you know. So that was the first time, man. It was it was it was in Thailand in uh, Bangkok playing yeah. against uh, Australia, I think, or against uh, I think it was against Vietnam. Yeah. So two tough teams. Two, two tough, tough teams, man. We're in a group with uh, the tough toughest toughest countries. Yeah, I'm always watching when Indonesia. But play, yeah, man, though. it was it was still like it was such an honor. It's always different than yeah. if you play with a club with That's a national I mean. team. You Do know, you prefer playing for Indonesia or or Bali United. Uh, Indonesia, of course. Yeah. But Bali United, it feels like you're representing your home as well. You know, That's what's for different you, man, between Bali, Bali United. <laughs> Uh, with the other clubs, you know, it's yeah. it's it's my home. You know, it's I've got pride Definitely, in man. representing it's my home you island. That hundred ten percent extra, yeah. even, you know, because yeah. you know it's 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 your home club. Especially when things are more professional in a club, like the national team, yeah, and even sometimes even more professional than a national team. You you feel better yeah. representing oh, that that club. Man. You know, yeah. like oh, like you've got everything. Everything's given to you. High level performance. There's no more excuses. You know, the, the, you have the kit man taking care of you. You have you have you know you have everything. Everything. The jerseys feel good. Yeah. Like you've got the ice bath. You've got three <laughs> massage guys yeah. before the match. Like everyone's taken care of. Yeah. You know, so there's no excuse anymore. So when you when you're playing for a club that's professional, yeah. you feel you feel definitely, definitely proud to represent it. So yeah. one thing with that when you're playing for Indonesia next time just remember to beat Malaysia and Singapore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our biggest <laughs> our biggest rivalry is Malaysia. Yeah. Like if we're playing against Malaysia, I the know. whole you know the whole no country's watching. They have their Everyone is yeah. just you know you yeah. could because Malay and uh, Indonesia you know this is almost the same language. There's beef in on social Definitely. media, you know. Like there was one time where Malaysia they flipped our flag, fuckers, and straight away fuckers. Indonesia yeah. was like. Nah. Yeah. Even and those chants they have like like to Singapore like Singapore it to Anjali. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Malays, I lived there for two years. Yeah, like, man. Fuckers. And then there was one time we were playing against Malaysia. My foot got a cut from like some this bomb the f- supporters threw, man. What the fuck? Bro, like it was uh, it was like almost a hole in my leg, but it was just fortunately it was just the skin, yeah. But it it's, was they threw something on yeah, the Yeah, if it, I think it was like rubber rubber bullets in like there was a Jesus bomb, Christ. you know what I mean? And oh my god, I think they got sh- sanctioned for that. Or something, bro, bro, yeah, you can go blind, bro. It they, it was like multiple times where they threw this thing, and Jesus Christ, yeah, man, god. yeah. So, but yeah, man. But that's the thing with with uh, football. It's it's definitely like it's the drama, man. Yeah. Like definitely drama all the time. It's especially good, though, when you adds, play adds a derby, yeah. especially when you play against your rivals, the fans are there. You know, there's beef on social media. Yeah, it's it's that's that's a sport, man. That's so after, what I love about football. After after achieving all your set goals and you're finally playing for for yeah. for for your home club, you're playing yeah. for Indonesia. Um, 
I see you now as, and I'm sure you see yourself as a role model to a lot of young people yeah. in Indonesia to play football, to get into sports, so. to have a career. I hope you so. are up there, bro. You're definitely setting a positive path for yeah. everyone and the youth of Indonesia. If you could give three tips to the youth of Indonesia to to want to focus and to achieve their goals within a yeah. sporting sporting realm, what three tips are you giving to the youth? So specifically for young athletes, it could be football, could be badminton. Yeah, Whatever I'd say the biggest advice I can give uh, is don't be afraid to be a small fish in a big pond because nice. when you put yourself in an environment where the level is harder the level is higher you would just naturally pick up those things yeah. those little things that you didn't know you have if you play on a sunday league all the time you know if you play with just your friends and it's just fun you're not growing you're not getting you're better. not really improving you know you're not learning the things that are important you know, sometimes you could be the best player on Sunday league, amateur league. Doesn't mean shit. When though. it comes to the professional game, yeah. and even even vice versa, the professional player playing on a Sunday league probably doesn't look special. No. You know what I mean? Because it's different. It's it's you. It's about making the right decisions. It's about making the right tackles. Yeah. It's about making an impact on the high level. You know what I mean? You don't have to be the guy dribbling like Cristiano yeah. Ronaldo on a Sunday league yeah. on a professional uh, league. Yeah. You'd get tackled, bro. Of course, you get fucked. You wouldn't even yeah. be able to have the opportunity yeah. to do that. You just, it's just about making the right decision. So as a young as young players, I'd say push yourself to play with older older people. Older, better people. Older, better people. Yeah. Older doesn't necessarily yeah. mean better, just but at better. least better level. You're learning. You can, uh, and always push yourself to be in an environment with like um, people you look up to because... Yeah, if you're if you're in an environment with role your mo- models. role models, Positive or someone role that's better, models. you know, you could go to the gym. Yeah, you know, ask for a mentor or ask for a trainer to train you. What's the right way to do this? What's the right way to do that? Oh, yeah, it's all trial and error. You know it's what I mean? Good advice. It's, very it's good. all trial and error. You yeah. sometimes we don't have the opportunity to have the best doctors, to have the best coaches. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you can always look for these things. You can things. always look for them, yeah. Somewhere in your city, you there's got to be someone. Position. You know, somewhere yeah. in your city, there's got to be someone that's that can help you. You know what I mean? So always push for that. Always be in an environment where the level is higher. Uh, could be older people. Could be, you know, s- people who are experts in that. Nice. Just be in an environment in that. Well said, well said. Yeah. So, we're gonna wrap things up really shortly, but before we do, um, you also have your YouTube channel now. Yes, right? so Bleak One TV. Shout out to Bleak One TV. Don't forget bro. to like I've been like watching your subscribe. videos on YouTube, bro. Really, yeah? really nice, fun <laughs> videos. He does like challenges where you can win money, where you can like do yeah. kind of like, I don't know, f- quiz hunts but like what scavenger you, hunts scavenger i've done scavenger hunts, hunts. we've done like um, around bali with like cool yeah. individuals it's really really yeah nice yeah though. but it's now i'm going to the direction where it's like i play one-on-ones with the uh, with the professional players yeah in i saw the you did basketball, basketball players we wado, did one with wado, wado yeah that actually um went more viral than the other videos it went really well with the one with wado nice. so i'm gonna go into that direction where it's we play one-on-ones with athletes could yeah. be basketball i love all sports yeah. man i love basketball i used to play dbl in, yeah. in high school yeah, you know yeah, nice so like all sports i'm definitely open to that so it's like yeah why not shout just have fun to, with that you know shout out to bleak one tv it's just bro. a hobby like yeah. comment subscribe like Other comment subscribe in bro the description will be a pop-up of yeah 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 here. make sure you go check him out definitely so quickly before you wrap this episode up brother yeah. we do a quick little quick fire question round sure um who's winning the champions league this year we're into the semis now, so it's Chelsea versus Real Madrid. Yeah. It's Man City versus PSG. What's I would your, say. What's your pick on? Well, Real Madrid, they've had a bad start, right? <laughs> but yeah, I could say Chelsea. You want you, you believe? Yeah, 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 sure, my sure. God. Why not? Why not? For the benefit of the doubt yeah, on my yeah. podcast, he's but again, PSG Chelsea. they have a really strong team. You know, they've yeah. got they've got Neymar who's really roaming around. He's free to do or, yeah. to do. You know, so that's the thing with with Neymar. He's He's making a big impact by doing just random shit. doing his yeah. thing, you know, doing his thing, opening up yeah. the gaps. Because yeah. for, for sure they're having two, three players follow him, yeah. so that opens up spaces yeah. for everyone else, you know. But Real Madrid, we're playing Real Madrid now. In this yeah, game. first leg at Bernabeu, and then I wish Hazard would be, you know, fit. he's fit. Yeah, he's playing. I mean, I wish he'd be doing better, you know. With, he's playing though now, with, finally. Uh, but yeah, I know you mean. He's. I had a lot of expectations way. with him, but. I love Eden Hazard, man. Of course, I, you know, I understand that as a player, you know. Gareth well. Bale also had a bad start at Real Madrid yeah. before, and he's he did okay in the long run. That bicycle kick. Yeah, but good. again, I'd go. I go for Chelsea. Chelsea. Man. Dude, Chelsea, it's all lining up. The, the year we won the Champions League, we yeah. swapped coach mid 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 thing. We we we. It's just you know those signs you see within yeah. within a round out of the Champions League. I think we're looking good, bro. 
Thomas Tuchel is a I don't know how to say his name properly But he's a fucking great, great manager Yeah Very good I love Super Frankie Lampard But it was just an upgrade <laughs> <laughs> So Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi Cristiano Ronaldo Thank you Hands down oh bro God. Cristiano Ronaldo hands down Best player Okay, I'm going to say three things why. You put Messi in any position, you put Ronaldo in any position. Yeah. Ronaldo can play at any position and yeah. fucking play good. Exactly. Also in any club. Exactly. Right? Look at Ronaldo for Portugal. He won the Euros. Look at the team and players he has around him. It's yeah. not compared to Argentina. Exactly. Argentina really hasn't done that much. Exactly, man. Ronaldo over Messi. And just the work ethic of for Cristiano. Ronaldo, Ronaldo is, is work something ethic. something to be an example of. Messi you know is mean? born talent. Yeah. Ronaldo is work ethic. And I mean, Messi is another... He's, he's an alien, you know? Yeah. Like, he could predict not, yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. But again... Like, I think work ethic, I always support that more, Yeah, you know? Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah. okay. Um, top three best footballing moments ever for you? Ever. In my career or no, in, in throughout the world. history? Yeah. Um, I'd say... I'd say um, the biggest highlight would be when Germany beat Brazil. Yeah. I'm half German, bro. I'm half German. I watched that game. I was just... And that was when I was so living good. in Germany. Oh, really? Let's so, go. So, yeah, it was it was crazy, man. Bro, it was so crazy. Good. Yeah. It was On crazy. The streets, everyone partying. It was so unexpected to, to see that. One. I remember watching it and I yeah. was like, what is happening? Like, oh, poor Brazilians. It was so unexpected to see that, country. you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Another good. one would be... Pretty hard, man. There's so many games, yeah, you know. There's course. so many games. For me, it's that. It's Germany, yeah. Germany beating Brazil and winning the, the World Cup. yeah. Because I'm half German and yeah. it's just an amazing thing for football and Chelsea winning the Champions League. Just those, those two just stick in my head for memories. Yeah. I mean, I always, I'm a real Madrid fan, you yeah. know. So whenever Madrid wins the Champions League, of I'm course. freaking stoked, you know. And that sticks with me. But, I mean, they win, they win all the time, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're beating so what you. can I say, we're you know. You in the what sandwich. can I say? What can I say? <laughs> I'd say another big one would be the comeback between AC Milan and Liverpool. Oh, yeah. That, that, that was That insane. was crazy, you in know. Istanbul, like Istanbul, yeah. That's why yeah. that explains how football can switch yeah. that quick. That it doesn't quick. matter if you're yeah. winning 3 0 no. in the first half. Yeah. It could be a comeback in the second half. You know what I mean? Definitely. It's fo- the ball. Bo- like what we say is. Bola itu budar. Yeah. So anything can happen. Yeah. You know, you could play the top team. And anything can happen. Anything in football, can happen, man. man. Anything, anything. And it, for sure, like once you're, you've, got, you've got the upper hand, you want to play safe, yeah. you sit back. The other team can build up, you know, like 100%. it could it could go either way. You're you not know? wrong. It could there. Go either way. Okay, the last the last final five quick round questions. Yeah. One place to visit before you die. This is personal. Man. I would say Cappadocia, Turkey. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've always like looked at pictures on Instagram, okay. and, and I've always said like, oh my god, this place beautiful. is beautiful. You know, they've got the hot air balloons. Yeah, yeah. So that's like that's a culture that's like really unique. Of course, Turkish in, culture in, is amazing. Turkish in, people are amazing. Yeah. Like, in my really opinion, cool like I want to see that. I want to experience that. You know, like be on a hot air balloon with all the other hot yeah. air balloons, and everyone's just like we'll go a one festival, day. You know, we'll go one day. Yeah, for <laughs> yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah. One thing to do before you die. Um, I'd say skydiving. Yeah. Skydiving, I definitely want to try that. I mean, I considered doing it like last year, but the thing is, I was always thinking, it's like, tough, bro. <laughs> yeah, what if I get injured? Man? Yeah. You, know, you, you might land wrong and then you're done. That's the end of your career. It's the end of your life, and maybe. Even, you know, I met your some career. guy in Jakarta and he's like, bro. Just go skydiving with me. You don't even need to do tandem in the in the first yeah. one. I'll I'll hold you, I'll hold you. Uh, yeah. you know. Just go for it. You know. Apparently, it's the most. You don't need to do tandem. I'll just pull the thing when you. I really want to do it as well, bro. But I bro, know it's I'm so sketchy. Shit myself, <laughs> one thing you do daily. Uh, daily. Uh, what your football, man? <laughs> like every day. Uh, I would say. Watching football. That's a good answer, bro. I'd say. I'd say. One thing I do daily. One thing I do daily. I definitely work out. I definitely Train. work out like I have rest days. I definitely visualize. Okay. I definitely okay. visualize like what I'm gonna do on the field. Before training, yeah. I visualize what happened. After after the after training, I visualize what can I have I done better, you know, like should I made that pass? What should, you know, what should I have done? Yeah. So sometimes it's good to watch your own games because you're looking from a bird's eye view. And like, oh, you're in a situation where, oh, you actually had more time than, yeah, than, you, so reviewing, than you thought, reviewing you know, and visualizing. you actually have space on yeah. to your left or behind you. And that's why awareness is really important, man. Like, that's one thing Indonesia, I hope, can develop in the next years. Like, the difference 
in the academies in Europe, they really think uh, they really think about awareness. They, when you pass the ball, you check your shoulders. Yeah. You, they have things where like you have a number, you pass, yeah. you, you, you call what number? Number, number six, seven, you know? Like, that's cool though. That's fundamentals that's you need to work on yeah. like from five years old, man. Yeah, like five onwards, you know? Like that's what I wish I had when I was growing up, growing up, you know, like we didn't have that. We, we only didn't had have shit. We only had, <laughs> we didn't have shit, you know, bro. or at least have someone call out, you know, yeah. put put it's numbers, put right. put fingers up. It's a you good know? drill. It's a good yeah, drill. it's definitely a good drill to, to have for athletes. And one thing you want to learn before you die. Um, right now, I want to like because I'm working on YouTube. Yeah. I definitely want to learn more about the YouTube algorithm, nice. you know, audience retention, yeah. CPM. Yeah. But the one thing I'd want to learn is uh to like master the guitar nice i'd say yeah yeah, yeah. so good, good other answer. than just An business side because yeah. i have, have multiple you know business investments i have you know trees in kalimantan that nice. i'm going for for furniture recently in bitcoin but you know it's right now it's a trend so i don't know where that's going you know for it's me only it's gonna go up well, Sean 64K the dark, you know, whatever. Right here. 64K. youtube i'm trying to do that as a hobby you know yeah. it's always good to monetize of course your social media course, instagram i'd never really like put my effort in instagram but instagram has turned out to be uh, one instagram of the business, biggest ways to monetize business. yeah you know Anything. i i didn't really put much effort into it but it yeah. worked really well my agent got so many brand deals and yeah I'm very lucky and like very fortunate to have him as my manager to get all these deals. But yeah, man, I'm always learning like other things than football on my spare time, yeah. business, e-commerce, you know, Trust me. YouTube. So whatever is working, but for my hobby, I want to master nice. the guitar, you know? Get any so, lady. Yeah, I did, <laughs> I, I did it as a kid, but you just stopped. I yeah. just stopped, you know, procrastination, same, same oh, priorities. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's just the hobbies. Well, it's never, time. it's never but too man, late. It's never too late. But man, you know, it's, it's nice to have, you know, as... As you grow older, you gotta have hobbies. Of you know, yeah. it's never late to learn yeah, anything, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Definitely. man, we're 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 over time here, but it was a fucking amazing episode. Good, amazing, we could man. Talk, we could it's talk such for an amazing two talk. Hours. Yeah, bro. So, bro, for sure. Matur suksama, bro. Matur suksama, Thank samua. you so much, my brother, for coming on. Thank much you, Kai, for Thank having you for me on your time podcast, today, of man. Course, man. We'll run it again very soon. I'm yeah, sure, bro. Of course, hundred percent. We'll have more chats, more discussions about sports. Not anything. We'll go down the other realms other than football on the next one as well. But yeah, of course. Thank you again for coming on, my brother. Thank you everyone for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Do all that good stuff. Check out Lee Kwan TV. Lee Kwan TV, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Kura Kura Beer, Mason Chocolates, Bobby Bagus, all the great sponsors. Thank you to them. All the links will be in the description. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Thank you, guys. We're out. Take care. Peace. Peace. All right, well done, brother. Dude, that was <laughs> sick.